I'm John Giever for MidPage Today. At a poster session at Quad AI, Dr. Dale Mohar of Kerrville Allergy and Asthma Associates of Kerrville, Texas, described findings of an efficacy study of olopatadine nasal spray compared with azelastine, the market leader. Okay. Well, it was a multi-center study, approximately 20 sites across the country. We were looking at seasonal allergic rhinitis, and what they were doing was comparing their drug, which was patinase, not yet approved, with astelin and placebo. And they were looking at both symptom control and adverse events, things like taste, smell, burning sensation, things along those lines, trying to cover both bases. And all of it was comparing back to placebo. We put about 540, I want to say 544 patients in, and they were on drug for two weeks total. So it was a fairly short, hit a hard season very well. And, uh, and was it, it was effective, and what were the what other results? What they reasons? found is that the patinase was as effective on symptom control as the existing astelin, which was what they were comparing against. Both of them are much better than placebo. Uh, their claim to fame of this study is, or the big point was, that with the, the patinase, the, the incidence of bad taste was much lower, which is one of the bigger complaints about astelin. Uh, their package insert says 15 to 20 percent, but patients say it's much, much higher. And how does that work? I mean, you, it's a nasal spray, right? right? So it, it just the kind of the aroma that, that leaks out the back of the, uh, the, uh, the nasal cavity? Well, and the nose, if it's working at all properly, is actually designed to move things from the nasal cavity to the back of the throat, and then you swallow it. You can actually test that if you want to have some fun by putting a little saccharin in your nose and see how long it takes you to actually taste the saccharin. And a normal nose, you'll taste it quite quickly. So, you know, the, ba the bitter taste of a nose spray gets to the back of your throat quite quickly and hangs around for a very long time. And does that cause problems with compliance, or is it more compliance of a convenience problem? And, well, compliance and convenience. I mean, they don't like it, and think about with kids. If it tastes real bad, you can't get the kids to take it. So that's another issue, but adults, I have quite a few patients that will stop based on taste, not just Astelon, but multiple nose sprays and medicines. If it doesn't taste good, your patient will not take it. And I assume this is intended to be a prescription product, yes. correct? Yes. Um, you know, what's the advantage of it over over-the-counter over over type antihistamines? Uh, the advantage of, and this is nose sprays in general, the prescription ones, one, you've got two classes of prescription nose sprays. You've got the topical steroids and the antihistamines. Currently, the only antihistamine that's a nose spray is Astelin. It has a total lock on that marketplace. And it has the taste issue and has a few other side effect issues. Uh, that's why there's a niche in the market, because they're very fast onset. If you take Astelin, it will give you symptom relief in five minutes. It's extremely fat, rapid onset. The competitors that are coming out are going to be equally fast, it looks like. Uh, you have a much lower side effect profile. When you're putting it in your nose, you don't get the systemic absorption, so you don't have to worry about what other drugs the patients are on to the same degree. So it's it's safer, which is a huge plus. Uh, the over-the-counters have m m many more side effects. Uh, Afrin, neosinephrine, all the over-the-counter nose sprays, if you're on them too long, start having rebound effects. They can affect blood pressure, glaucoma. I mean, they, just, they can affect the nasal membranes badly. So there's just a lot more side effects to the over-the-counters versus the prescription versions. I see. And uh, are there more studies planned for this product before uh, they would be submitting an application? Uh, probably not. The final safety studies have been done. It's They're awaiting a final word or word from the FDA if more studies are required now. So I'm sure there will be more studies forthcoming because they'll, then they'll have, after approval, they still have more studies to do. Mm -hmm. But I expect, I mean, we should be seeing approval fairly soon. And then I said there's two or three competitors coming out that look equally promising that are a little ways behind them, but they're coming up fast also. And overall, the, uh, um, the degree of efficacy that, uh, that you get from, from these products, is it adequate or, or you know, could, could, you know, could we be doing better? There's always room for improvement. And what's interesting there is the patients themselves will vary. So it may give you 100% control in patient number one of the day, and patient number two it might be 20% and then you need to add something in. And that again, the, where the nose sprays are nice is you could add in a pill or a single air or something of a different class and it keeps it easier on the patient. And the, uh, the two-week time frame of the study, is that, uh, is that like clinically a relevant uh, time frame? It is, for an antihistamine especially, because again, their onset action is fast. These aren't something that have a huge buildup effect to start working. I mean, you use it and they work.
and that's the nature of the over-the-counters. If you take a Tylenol sinus allergy over-the-counter, you want it to be working within an hour, not three days later. And this similar, similar situation is simply much faster. I'm John Giever from MidPage Today.